David Schwartz explained XRP will hit $25,000 overnight. Despite the fact that Ripple's chief technology officer, David Schwartz, says he is still most concerned about payments, he also drew attention to carbon credits and gaming EFTs. Welcome to the Finance Up channel. Please watch this video to the end, like it and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the release of new videos. Also in this video, we will show the lucky winner of Give Away Free 500 XRP and maybe it will be you. So watch the video carefully until the end. In his first forecast, Hogan noted that Ripple could win if the final decision states that XRP was not sold as a security. He noted that the reason for the forecast was Ripple's lack of legal obligations to the buyer of XRP, according to Hogan. The first option, and why I think Ripple will win, is that it had no legal obligations to XRP buyers after the sale. No after sales obligations. In other words, there can be no investment contract without investment. He also mentioned that Ripple could win on the basis of an argument about legal obligations if it appeals. In his second forecast, Hogan warned that, despite public opinion that Ripple can win the case, the company has a significant chance of losing the lawsuit. He noted that the probability of losing Ripple is almost 30. He suggested that the judge could rule in favor of the SEC if the evidence that Ripple used XRP sales to create its cross-border payments business seemed convincing to her. The only thing the SEC has done a good job of in its previous summaries is outlining all the statements, emails, and YouTube videos of various Ripple employees talking about the price of ESERP. I mean, they've had eight years of work. Judge Torres will review all of these statements and may agree. With the SEC, Hogan added. In addition, Hogan noted that if Ripple loses the case, the company will be able to withstand the financial storm that may follow after a negative outcome. In fact, Hogan said that the case could end in a draw, noting that there is a 19.1 chance that the judge will not be able to rule in favor of either side and divide the child, as in the parable of King Solomon. Judge Torres divides the child, arguments of both sides, and decides that the early excerpt sales were securities sales, but at some point, the sales lose this designation and become non-security sales, he added. However, given the impact of the case on the overall cryptocurrency market, Hogan pointed out that the probability that it will come to a draw is low. He believes that the judge needs to make a reasoned decision based on the evidence presented by both sides. In his latest forecast, the lawyer noted that the judge always has the opportunity to make an unexpected verdict, noting that this is a common case in lawsuits. The fourth possibility is something that no one has really thought about, and this sometimes happens in lawsuits. In conclusion, the official forecast of the lawsuit made in the legal bulletin is a 50.12 chance of Ripple winning and a 29.88 chance of sex whining, Hogan concluded. Indeed, cryptocurrency market enthusiasts are closely watching how the outcome of the case will affect the price of Ripple's native token, XERP. It is worth noting that in the past, SERP recorded a slight increase whenever the court ruled in favor of Ripple. The Securities and Exchange Commission, SEC, has just announced that it will be filing charges against eight online influencers in connection with a $100 million securities fraud scheme. In this scheme, the defendants manipulated exchange, traded stocks by using the social media platforms like Twitter and Discord. In its lawsuit, which was submitted to the United States District Court for the Southern District of Texas, the SEC seeks permanent injunctions, disgorgement, prejudgment interest, and civil penalties against each defendant. The SEC specially mentions Stefan Harvatin, who goes by the Twitter username or Laidback, as apart from facing the above charges, he will also be barred from trading penny stocks in the market. According to the SEC's official announcement, seven of the eight defendants advertised themselves as accomplished traders and amassed hundreds and thousands of followers on these seven defendants are accused of buying specific stocks and encouraging their sizable social media following to purchase. Those stocks, by publishing price objectives, or making it known that they were buying, holding on to, or growing their stock positions in them. However, the complaint claims that as the share prices and or trading volumes increased in the securities they were promoting, 
The individuals regularly sold their shares without even disclosing their intentions to do so. Joseph Sanson, the chief of the SEC Enforcement Division's Market Abuse Unit, officially states that, as our complaint states, the defendants used social media to amass a large following of novice investors and then took advantage of their followers by repeatedly feeding them a steady diet of misinformation, which resulted in fraudulent profits of approximately $100 million today's action, exposes the true motivation of these alleged fraudsters and serves as another warning that investors should be wary of unsolicited advice they encounter online, Sanson said. The sex ongoing investigation is being handled by Andrew Pallid, David Scheffler, and Michael T. Perillo of the Market Abuse Unit. Now, the case involving the blockchain company Ripple and the Securities and Exchange Commission is nearing completion, and both parties have submitted their final materials. It is noteworthy that during the hearings Ripple recorded minor victories, while the presiding judge ruled in favor of the firm on specific elements. Interestingly, based on the positive decision, several legal experts claim that Ripple has a chance to win the case. In particular, Jeremy Hogan predicted possible outcomes before sentencing, noting that both sides have a chance to emerge victorious, explaining his point of view in a YouTube video posted on December 9. We are really excited about carbon credits, he said in an interview on November 29 in Miami after speaking at the Decentral Conference. I think it's just because I think he's a really good fit. Now, there is a real problem in the field of carbon credits related to the origin and ensuring that things are not issued. For example, there are no two sets of carbon credits. Meanwhile, games are another area ripe for development, because, according to Schwartz, non-interchangeable tokens can help studios more easily attract users to their newest products. There are real problems in the gaming space that Neft solves, he said, noting that gamers tend to feel comfortable in old games and may not be in a hurry to follow developers in new products. You have to start from scratch, and this is a sense of loss. If you could take the NF with you, you wouldn't have a sense of loss, and you'd be more likely to switch to the game the game studio wants you to play. You can see the current price of XARP on your screens, with a daily trading volume of $648,452,340 used. Excerpt has declined by 3.2 in the last 24 hours. Thank you for watching this video to the end. If you liked it, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so as not to miss the release of new videos.